This is the No Spoon Podcast. I'm your host, Red Pill J. We're back with another episode of the No Spoon Podcast. Um, today, we're going to do our topic show, our show that we talk about the different topics that's going on. We have a special guest host, uh, guest, guest co-host in here today, and I will pull her in right now and introduce you to her. She is going to uh, liven this place up a little bit. That's all I can say. So, um, but before we go, um, like I said before, to all those that have, you know, been following me on different social media platforms, have been listening to the podcast, you know where to go, www.thenospoonpodcast.com. That's where you get all the content. There's blogs on there, past episodes. If you haven't caught up, go ahead, check them out. They're all on there. Um, so we got that out the way. Um, let me also get this disclaimer. I do this before every single show, and this is kind of just sets the tone. If you don't know if this is your first time, then this will be the first time you're hearing this. But I want you to, to really keep this in the back of your mind or at the forefront of your mind, actually, as we go forward, because this is important. Um, when, we, when, when we come here, I, I know a lot of people, they like to listen to podcasts. They follow people because of their expertise. I don't claim any expertise. Um, I claim to be a student. And that means that means that when we come here, I don't claim to know everything. So I'm always open to learning more. And I know everybody that comes on the show is the same way. We all want to learn more. So we don't claim to know everything. I believe that um, not one person knows everything, but everybody knows something. And if we have that mindset, then when we come to the table and we're bringing something to the table and we're getting something from the table, it's not just it's not just a give give or a take take. It's a give and take relationship. We're all here to learn. So if you hear something on here, maybe you want to kind of enlighten me or enlighten us and and kind of, you know, you have more information by all means, please send it. Please share it. Please. Let's 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 open up the dialogue. That's what it's all about. So once again, there are no experts on this panel. We're students. We're trying to learn um, and we come with that humble attitude every single time. So without further ado, let me introduce to you today that our uh, special co-host for today is a, a comedian, a counselor, a um, she is a motivational speaker. She will definitely get you ready to leave the house with a purpose. And that's why we have on today. Welcome, Megan McLover. What's going on? What's going What's on? Up? Hey. hey. <laughs> Oh man, I'm yeah. happy to be here. Thank you so much for, you know, asking me to come on your platform. You know, um, you know, we're gonna share this and and uh, just just really awesome. Thank you so much for having oh, me. Man, I, I thank really you. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here. We're trying. You know, we we just try to have people that can bring a different perspective. You know, I don't I don't like to be a a, a, a monolithic show where we just continuously live in the echo chamber of our own thoughts, like. You know that that's not that's not how we grow. So with that no. being said, we always got to have different perspectives. We always got to see things from everybody's point of view. And I think that you bring a really unique perspective to what we're going to talk about today and what we got going on. So I appreciate you. Thank you for being oh, here. Thank you so much. I'm honored. I'm honored. Well, let's well, go. Let's get to it. I'm well, ready. Let's get to it. I mean, I mean, there's an there's enough news to cover. You know, a few days worth, but we only got a little bit of time. So we gotta we gotta we gotta get it all in. Right. So. All right. So this week is inauguration week. Yeah. Wow. And, and President elect Joe Biden will be sworn in along with uh Vice President elect Kamala Harris. She will be sworn in. So just that alone, we'll stop there. What's your thoughts on 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 just that? And then we'll and then I'm sure that we can branch off into a billion other topics, but just here we go. The Trump era is coming to an end. It's now the Biden. So what do you think? Well, I think, um, first of all, I think that the Trump era mm -hmm. has been associated um, improperly, right? <laughs> so what they did was they made Trump the, the representative or the rep representator of, uh, of the republic, which mm -hmm. was not smart. That wasn't smart mm -hmm. because it did not allow for Trump to just be Trump and Trump is going to always just be Trump. Correct. Right? So when you, when you put an entire movement 
and associate. And this is what this is what cultures do all the time. Mm -hmm. Cultures do all the time. They associate the movement or uh, uh, the principles, the morale, the 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 motivation, the inspiration, all this stuff to one person. And then when that one person does something or some things that don't align with the movement and the doctrine, if you will, of the motivation or the inspiration or the guidelines or the foundation of the movement or whatever, mm -hmm. then the movement comes into question, right? right. right. So, Thanks. so the, the Trump era, uh, Trump as a president, you know, if it all goes through and so forth and so on, then yes, that Trump being a president will be over. Right. However, it will not be over uh, for people who still have uh, certain views, who want right. to live life a certain way, who want freedom, who want freedom of speech, who want to be able to keep their guns, who uh, do not uh, agree with uh, abortion, who, you know, all these different things. So you're going to still have that. That's not going to go away. You know, right, I, right, right. And I hope that people are not crazy enough to think that, uh, you know, just because you 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 get rid of a president, then you get rid of people's foundational beliefs. That's not going to happen. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, that you know, you hit it. You I mean, you came. Look, I, I'll, I'll say this. You came out, you know, swinging because because it's like. That's what I've been. That's that's kind of what I've been saying. I don't see, think a lot of people see it that way. I've, and I've said this. I said this. I think even before the election, I was saying. You know, the biggest problem that I see with this whole, you know, MAGA movement is that Trump started that movement, but then he became the movement. And then it's kind of like when you become the movement, then you embody everything in the in that and so now you have what 75 they 74 75 million people who voted for him and i'm not saying all of them are die hard you know make america great again to the store hats on you know what i'm saying right. but for the most part you take on all the characteristics of the person that's has now embodied the movement and i've always thought that i i, I didn't like that I, I didn't like that from the beginning i thought that that was a dangerous, like we've seen that script played out before. And I don't think it ends well. No, it doesn't, you know, and, and that's what we've seen. That's what right. We, I mean, we, we basically anyone who uh, is supportive of, uh, uh, you know, uh, a two, two family household, two parent household, mm -hmm. uh, anyone who's supportive of gender, anyone who's supportive of, of, of not wearing masks, anyone who's supportive of no vaccine, anyone who's supportive of anything that is Republican mm -hmm. is automatically called a Trump supporter. But that's not right. true. That's not true. Mm -hmm. And you cannot like Trump at all and still vote Republican. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has nothing to do with it. But that's what mainstream media did. It was a trick and it worked. It worked very oh. well. Because yeah, a lot of people, I can go on my page and talk about families and the dynamics of families and, you know, how fathers are needed in the home and da da da, da. Oh, you love Trump. I've never even said Trump. What are you talking about? <laughs> I said that the Republican Party has a certain standard uh, and certain beliefs, certain ideas, uh, and so forth and so on. And, and I agree with that, or I'm talking about that, or whatever. And then all of a sudden, it, it, you're a Trump supporter. And so they're not realizing that Reagan talked about the same thing. Uh, Bush talked about the same thing. They all talk about the same thing because that is part of the Republican Party's, um, uh, not just the rhetoric, but that's the foundation of it. So many uh, Blacks were Republicans, African Americans uh, were Republicans, First, right, yeah, no yeah. Black Democrats, never, never, no, nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. Why would they? Yeah, nowhere. so, uh, you know, it's all, it's all, uh, in, in the knowledge, it's all in the knowledge that you have. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to believe the mainstream media, then I guess, I guess that's what you would think. You would think people are Trump supporters. I mean, it's so crazy. I was talking, I did a show with, um, uh, 
KD from uh, No Other Choices, a firearm strainer, and and he was telling me because he was having the same issues, you know, and he was telling me that on you know on his on his social media page he would post something because he's a big two A advocate. Anytime he posted something, you know, advocating for the Second Amendment, it's like Trump supporter, you're a MAGA MAGA hat. Where's your MAGA hat? This and this and that, and it's like whoa 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 whoa. You, you do know that these ideas pre dated Trump like they existed even before he was born like he's right. not the he's not the father of conservatism or you know the Republican Party he's just he was a candidate you know he was a <laughs> that's it. So, yeah he's just it, that's it you know Obama's mother is white oh so so <laughs> so do we do we hang every black thing on Obama's on Obama's shoulders his mother's white like right. give me a you, you can't, and this is what I'm saying. They, they, they like to uh, 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 massage the truth and make things what they want to make them. You know, so we, I'm not going to uh, say that, you know, everything black this, black that, black this, black that, when Obama's mother was white. His right. Was white. His grandfather, uh, great grandfather, one of the people, uh, was was heavy into Germany and the Hitler era and all that kind of shit. So so what are we talking about? Like you gotta you gotta make it make sense. You know, o Obama is just was just I guess he is just someone who uh, is used to represent uh, the black needs. Let me not say agenda. I'll say needs. <laughs> <laughs> the black needs, right? Yeah. And 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 Trump is the same. He's representing the conservative needs and what it is that they want and what it is that they desire. But to say that you know I'm an Obama supporter, nobody said that. You know, so yeah, why true. You you're a Trump supporter. Yeah, and and you know what? It's like it's like it's like you you just said it's it's they've taken everything that has been around before Trump, and now they've attached it to Trump. And it's almost like now those those things and because they've already decided that Trump is everything evil that embodied in one person. Yeah. So now those ideas then become evil as well. And so it makes you think, right. was was the target Trump or was the target the ideology? No, it was always the ideology. Right. Yeah. See, they knew that Trump was a loose cannon. They already knew that. And they knew he was going to say things and do things that were going to irritate the masses. I mean, he said and done things that irritated hardcore conservatives. Like people are like, "What the? Fuck? What is he saying?" With the right. Oh, somebody take his phone away immediately. Oh my god. So he's done a lot of things to uh, that have damaged a lot of things that have damaged the conservative views. Um, even his his. You know, we have to remember that he ran as an independent. He 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 wasn't. He, he had no mm -hmm. intentions on having. Uh, well, at least from what we know, he had no intentions on having uh, such close ties with conservatism, because that was never really his thing. You know what I'm saying? He was mm -hmm. going to run. He ran as an independent, but then he realized I got to make a choice. So, mm -hmm. what will you know, based on my beliefs, so forth and so on, what what can I, what, what's the best party for me to go to? Where can I go? Mm -hmm. Democrats already got Hillary. So, so what can I do? Right? So he said, okay, well, I'll go over to the Republican. But remember, they never wanted him. They rejected him. Oh, yeah, him. yeah, definitely. Because they knew he was a loose cannon. But, you know, they didn't have nobody else. Well, you, you remember he, even before he ran for office, and this was back in, you know, he funded Jesse Jackson's run for sure for for presidency when he was a Democrat. He sure did. You know what I mean? Well, so, I ain't heard Jesse Jackson say shit. I no. ain't heard Jesse Jackson say a damn word all this time. He got hundreds of thousands, of millions of dollars. I ain't heard him say shit. It's so many people uh, that he has helped. Donald Trump has helped. Mm -hmm. I ain't heard none of them. They don't want they don't want any association association with him at all. When he had when he was there to help them in many many ways. And to be honest, you know, I, I don't like the word petty. I really don't. Mm -hmm. But I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't like words. I really don't. Mm -hmm. But I hope 
I hope that Trump shows his entire ass. I hope that he shows his ass. And people are like, damn, I hope he has receipts. And I hope that he shows his ass because people need to know the truth. They right. need to know the truth. And, and they have completely and utterly alienated him. And it's really, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's, it's really sad and it, it's, it's, it's shameful. It's shameful what the elite black community have done uh, oh, in, the, in the cooperation of demonizing this man. It, it, it's, it's really unfortunate. Now, I'm not saying in any way he hasn't helped. Like I said, <laughs> I mean, he, he, has, he has said some of the stupidest, craziest, dumbest shit. And I'm like, every time I'm like, what, the, what is that for? What I, say, I, I swear. Yeah. I, there, so many times I've been like, I, I, you know, he's he's talking and it's a topic and I'm like, oh, this is easy. I know how to explain this. And, and I'm looking at him like, why did you say that? Like, it's right. simple. You just have to say this, this, and that. Right. You know what I mean? And right. it, 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 like, I'm gonna give you an example. It wasn't, it was, it was it the last debate. It was, a, it was a debate when they said, oh, he refused to denounce white supremacy. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, you have to know they're going to ask you this question. Like, right. you have to know that. So right. why not just be clear, concise, get it out the way, let's move on. Why do you have to play these, well, what, who are you talking about? What do you, you know what I mean? It's almost like, and I, and I don't think he, I don't, I don't know if he's, if he does this on purpose or if it's like, but it's almost like, why did why did you do that? Like why? <laughs> yeah, sir. And it's so it's so terrible because there are several videos. I mean, several videos where he denounces white supremacy, racism. Oh, yeah. He denounces the KKK. Uh, uh, the KKK leaders, the white supremacist leaders, have said they don't want nothing to do with Trump. They said. I mean, there's quotes of them videos. Of them saying mm -hmm. they denounce Donald Trump, he's not for us, et cetera, et cetera. But when he has ample opportunities, it's it's I think what happens psychologically, I think that what happens is he says to himself, You can't make me do shit. You can't make me yeah. do shit. So you're gonna yeah. ask me these questions if you wanna ask me these questions. I don't have to answer them if I don't wanna answer them. You kiss my ass. Instead of looking at the whole. Mm -hmm. You know, he just he's he can't see the forest for the trees, you know. So he's like, nah, you can't tell me what to do. I don't have to answer your question. I don't say shit. I don't say nothing. I've already denounced it several times. I'm not gonna denounce it again. And it's like, okay, listen, millions and millions, millions of people are watching the debate. Just denounce it. You know, and yeah, so, just denounce it. Yeah. And so he just he he takes he he's taken so many bait. He's taken so much of bait. Um and I don't know, maybe it's all been designed that way uh, for him to get to the place where he has all this information. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. It, <laughs> it really confused me. It confused oh, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It confused me a lot. Because I was like, wait a minute, we can smash this shit right here. Like, we can handle a lot of things right now. Like, why aren't we taking care of that? So it was so much so that I just backed off. I was like, you know what? I'm good. Y'all, y'all. Y'all playing too many games with my emotions. This is the time to say whatever you're gonna say. Say it now. Get the evidence out. Do whatever investigation. Do it now, and then we can be done. But nobody ever did what I said. So I mean, it, it, it's a uh, <laughs> but you know cert, certain a lot of these alt right people, all these white nationalists, they did denounce. I mean, they they actually I think it was Richard Spencer who was the guy who. Yes. He he actually uh, endorsed Biden, but you don't you don't sure. hear any of that, and uh -huh. and. After, I talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, the, the the famous, you know, very fine people on both sides video, if you just let it play, like the next couple sentences, he says, I'm not talking about white nationalists or neo-Nazis. They should be condemned totally. So it's almost like, you know, I I get I get like what you're saying. He he probably just has I ain't got to answer nothing. But it's almost like you you are a politician. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of people that listen to mainstream media narrative and they believe it. So there's a lot of people that are watching the debate right now as you're talking that they don't know that you've actually denounced white supremacy numerous amount of times. Right. So, so you have to think about those people. Um, there was another point I was going to I was going to make. I, it just it just slipped my mind. But uh, 
Yeah, I know. Anyway, it'll 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 come back probably when we're done. Right. But, uh, <laughs> it'll, it'll, but yeah, it'll come at the end. Well, you know, you know, Trump is uh, he's he's he is it's interesting, man. And I, you know, I was I was talking to somebody today, and I said, man, you know, in order to be the most loved, you also have to be the most hated by certain people. You're not going. To, it's very rare that you find somebody who's loved by everybody or hated by everybody it's if you're if you're extremely hated it's probably because you're extremely loved by people who don't believe the same way and i think that's kind of what i've seen with him is like it's 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 extreme love and extreme hate from yeah. you know and it it's a for oh that's what i was gonna say um i saw an interview that he did uh, a few months ago before the election with jason whitlock from outkick he's be the sports reporter guy but anyways yeah. And he was talking and, and Jason Whitlock was telling him, like, you know, you used to be friends with all these people. You used to be friends with Oprah. You used to be friends with, you know, a lot of the black community. Now they don't. And it was almost like you, you have to watch it because it's like he the way he answered, he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're all friends. He, and he was he was saying it like, I, I think we're all still cool now. And, and I had the sense of like, I don't I don't know if he really understands you know what i'm saying or if he i mean maybe being in the white house being in that bubble even though he's very aware of a lot of things are you not aware of certain things are you know it's almost like if if me and you never see each other you know in 10 years i'm still gonna think well we're cool right. but if there's a narrative out there you might that you might bite into or whatever however it might go i might say well why, why is she mad at me you know what i'm saying it's, right. Right. that's yeah. just the sense i got from that it's really yeah. weird because, you know, he, he, there's an interview of him, uh, I think with Larry King, I can't remember who it was. And they were asking him many years ago, if you ran for president, who would be your vice president? And he said, Oprah Winfrey. Right, right. Said, Without even thinking. He was like, Oprah. Like, like, what are you, what are you talking about? It would be Oprah. Yeah. And he is delusional if he thinks that <laughs> people are still his friends, whether, right. whoever it is. Oprah, Puff Daddy, Snoop Dogg, whoever, dumb at all, all of these people, Jesse Jackson, so forth and so on. I mean, your mom taught you who your friends were and who your friends weren't in elementary <laughs> based on their behavior. Right. So if their behavior, regardless of whether they come to you and say, hi, we're breaking up as friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, <laughs> it doesn't happen like that. Sometimes you don't get a call. You know, you don't get a Dear John letter or a text message like, no, I'm not your friend anymore. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta look at people's behavior and be like, oh, guess we're not friends. Yeah. Clearly not friends. Right, you know? right. So I think that he loves himself so much that he could not ever think that someone could possibly not want to be his friend, especially after he's been there for them for so long. Oh, we, oh, we, we've been together. We've hung out. We whatever, you know, it, you know, we, it, we, we've always been together. Always, always, always. We're very, yeah. We're very, it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. And, but it's like, yo, they're not, these people are not down for you, you know? So I don't know. I mean, I don't know how he, like I said, I, I really hope that, uh, petty, which is a word I do not like, but, but in this case, please what? pull out all the receipts. Cause I'm here, for the show. I'm here for the show. I'm really, I really am. I'm here for it. I think if there's somebody that embodies pe pettiness, I think it would probably be Donald Trump. I think he can. I think he can take pettiness to it to. Hold on. Yeah, the pettiness 2.0 might you know. Galactic levels of petty. <laughs> <laughs> Moon level, Pluto levels of petty. Like, oh yeah. Right there. Uh, so I'm here for it. I really am. I really. Oh yeah, am. me too. Yeah, I, I would. I would. I would love for him to just to just really go in on on. You know, especially especially people, and you said like you know, these people were friends with. Him. I mean, you look at I, I was watching Jennifer Hudson saying at a at a at a Biden fundraiser, and I'm thinking this is the same man that Trump. You know, housed you after your fam family was murdered. You know what I mean? And he and he he let you stay at his hotel for free. He took he he wow. he, did, he did a lot for you, and yet you're going. You're not like nobody came to his. To his defense in any way shape or form and it's like you wow. know wow but you know money talks 
I, yeah. I, I, money talks and integrity has been silenced. It really has. It's just mm -hmm. been silenced. Like people do not have character. They don't have integrity. And uh, it's, it's, it's sad. It really is. I mean, it's just a shock. It's a shock. It's like, damn, y'all, like that? Yeah. Like, I mean, like I have said over and over again, I do not, if I could call President Trump on the telephone, mm -hmm. I would be like, could you, hey, uh, Mr. President, how you doing? Uh, so nice to talk to you. I hope you're having a blessed day. God bless you here. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, sir. What are you doing? I'm like, fucking Shut up. Like, I would be going off on him because it, he's always saying foul shit. He hasn't been doing it a lot lately. But right. like a year ago, two years, I mean, this whole, the whole three, first three years, I was just like, oh my God, this guy is bananas. And I really wasn't, I wasn't going to vote, period. I was just like, you know what, I, whatever, I don't care. But mm -hmm. when I started doing some research, I was like, oh, I have to vote because I am a conservative in my views. So mm -hmm. I have to vote conservative because of the views, the ideology, the ideals, and the principles. I have to vote Republican. But if not for my research, I would not mm -hmm. have voted for Trump because he's just, it's just too, it just, he's just too spitfire with the pistol. I mean, he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, yo, man, come on, bro. Help me out. Like, help me. Yeah. I'm, trying yeah. I'm trying to get people to realize their own conservatism. And, uh, you know, and you're just really not helping. Like, I'll give you a great example. I live in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. And so I have uh, on my phone an app that alerts me of things that go on within a certain mile radius of where I live, right? Right, right. And it's like a citizen, citizen app or something. Yeah, yeah, and so I can't, have. I can't recall exactly the number, but I'm going to give you just a roundabout. There's been probably, today's the 18th, so there's been probably I would I would say on the average, eighteen to twenty five carjackings by gunpoint within a two point five mile mile radius of where mm -hmm. I live. Recently, since January one. Oh wow! Yeah, okay, that's recent. By gunpoint. Mm -hmm. By gunpoint. There's been robberies. There's been fires. There's been. Let's not even count how many Amazon packages have been stolen off of people. <laughs> I'm not even gonna, not gonna go into all of that. And I mean on camera, on camera. Right. Of course, now everybody's wearing a fucking mask, so nobody's being identified. Uh, uh, really, this is like a this is this is a criminal's paradise. I mean, criminal's paradise. <laughs> so I'm 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 looking at all this stuff that's going on, and I don't live in South Side Chicago. I live about maybe. A six-minute drive from downtown. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in a pretty decent area. And the only thing I want to reply to every single solitary one of these accounts is, but didn't you want to defund the police? Yeah, there it is. There, yeah, that part. You wanted to defund the police. Mm -hmm. You're in a city where, where they won't give you a gun permit. You got to be doing straight up fellatio on somebody to get a fucking gun permit. <laughs> you got to do some serious shit to get a gun permit to just buy a gun. We're not talking about concealed carry. We're just mm -hmm. talking about just having a gun in your possession, in your house for protection. Right. And you want to defund the police? And every time I look in the app, where's the police? This is ridiculous. We shouldn't have to live in fear. No, 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 no. You're the same people that said defund the police. You're the same people that voted for somebody who said defund the police. Well, actually, he didn't say defund the police. Wait a minute. Let me take it back. Biden alluded to defunding the police, but then once he got uh, president-elect, then he, he started backtracking on that defund the police because, of course, he needs the police and the arms and this and the other to, you know, to push his agenda. So he cannot right. on the police. But the bottom line is that in 
these heavy, heavy, heavy Democrat run cities, mm -hmm. they have much higher crime. Uh, they have, I've never seen car, carjackings in 2021. Yeah, really. That's There's no chop shops anymore. What are you stealing cars for? Like, give me, like, make it make sense. Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing with the cars? And most of the time, they're finding these cars wrecked on the side of the road or whatever, or they use this car to go commit another crime, so forth and so on. But if everybody was allowed to have a gun, I bet you there would not be as many carjackings. Maybe one, oh, maybe one every month. Cause you know you get your head blown off. Let's do let's do a research. Let's 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 see how many carjackings are there in Texas and Arkansas and mm -hmm. Virginia and you know what I'm saying and Florida right. even Florida where they got them gold teeth yuck mouth niggas they ready <laughs> I know, they ready ready body body and I bet you they don't have nearly as many carjacks. I'm talking about within a 2.5 mile radius. It's been between 18 and 25 carjackings in 18 days. Well, I mean, look, I'm in I'm in L.A., another heavily Democratic. We're in a Democrat state. This is, this, you know, they call it California here. But I mean, they said that that I just got an alert today from a news source. Murders are up one hundred and fifty percent from last year at this time. Because you was, the police. I mean, we have we got a D.A. here that is that is not prosecuting. He's not prosecuting, resisting arrest. So you can resist arrest. And you're not going to go to jail for it. You might get locked up, but they're going to let you go because they're going to drop it because he's not going to pick it up. But it's like, you know, 100, 150%. They said there was, in 12 days, 21 murders. On January 12th, there had already been 21 murders in L.A. County. And But like you said, these are the same people that wanted to defund the police. These are the same people that are saying, you know, no, no more police. Police are bad. But yet now the gang members are better. I don't. Well, not these new gangs. Maybe the old, <laughs> these new ones. I don't know. I don't. They don't have no principles, guard guidelines. There ain't no OGs. Ain't nothing. These these are a bunch of reckless. I don't know what they are. They shouldn't even be called gangs. They should be called something else because they they should be called fangs, fake gangs. Like they, it's just a yeah. bunch of jokes. These, these these guys are no no principles at all. None. Well, you know all that's all that has that has changed. Yeah, yeah, drastically. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. So, you know, you want to defund the police. You don't want police. Police are bad. But then, you know, so is, you know, a little too much on the corner is killing up everybody. And so right. <laughs> right. We, we can't say nothing about it. So what, is, so what is what what is what do you what do you think a Biden administration is going to look like? What is that going to how is that going to play out? in our everyday lives? Or is it gonna play out in our everyday lives? Um, well, I said a few months ago, I had said that I think that uh, a Biden administration will, um, it, it will start to alleviate some of the pressures because they wanna make it look like Trump was the problem for everything. Mm -hmm. So the stimulus checks will be higher if they can pull it off. The stimulus checks will be higher. The you know maybe some of the cities will start opening their restaurants. Uh, you know the economy will go up a little bit, stuff like that. And then they're gonna put the hammer down. Right. Or they're just gonna put the hammer down first <laughs> and put your put their knee on your neck. You think Floyd had a knee on his neck? The knee, the knee on your neck, the knee on the neck of the United States is gonna be so heavy. It's not even gonna be funny. So um, it's gonna be. Regardless, regardless, it's going to be a mandate of a lot of really, really horrific things. You know, I think that, um, I mean, I mean, it, it's basically right in your face now, right? So just go into the Republican states now, Florida, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. uh, Texas, Georgia, um, these states are open. You can go into a restaurant, you can have something to eat, you can uh, buy and sell. You, the, the tattoo places are open. The barbershop. A lot of small businesses are still open. So on, so on. Heavy Democratic states. Everything's completely shut down. People are going bankrupt. Um, uh, you know, you can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. But yet, the rates are the rates of this COVID is keeps going up. So I'm trying to figure out 
what what's 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 what makes sense? Doesn't make any sense. If you if you're saying that stay in the house and don't do anything, don't go anywhere, prevents the the spread, then the states that are on complete lockdown should have the least numbers. I mean, right. that's just regular math. That's just like one and two, make three. Like I don't I don't I don't understand what the problem is. Uh, so I think that it's going to be a lot more of that. Um, he already said something about a hundred days, stay, keep your mask on for a hundred days. I don't even know what that means, <laughs> but, but you know, what's crazy. It's like, 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 well, let me just say this as we said, uh, you know, since you're in Chicago, I see that your mayor, Lori Lightfoot has now kind of did a 180, and she says that businesses need to open up as soon as possible, which is interesting. Um, yeah, but, after seventy five percent of them have closed. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, she was getting her hair done, you know. Who? <laughs> yeah, I know, and really, she, <laughs> but, but never, who? A kindergartner? Like, <laughs> who was doing Lightfoot hair? Oh shit, Lightfoot was not getting her hair done. That's the problem. <laughs> that there is the fucking problem. She wasn't getting her hair done. <laughs> she wasn't getting her hair done by nobody black. Ain't nobody here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Ain't nobody done by no black person, no Latino, no, no Democrat, no uh, 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 Dominican. wasn't doing, was doing no blowout. Nobody was. Her wife, husband, whatever that is that she's married to, was doing her hair and doing a shitty job. That was yeah, it was terrible. But but I remember she did she did say she remember when they asked her she said, "Well, I'm a public figure, so I'm up here in front of the camera all the time, so it's understandable why I need to get my hair done." Like I, like you know. And I, I don't know agree. what. And I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> right. But go get your hair done and get you a suit that fits, and 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 do something. What? Who is in charge? I don't even like that lady, and I'll do the shopping for. I mean, I, listen, right? Listen, yeah. What do you need? <laughs> well, she need? looks like she looks like she lost she lost a lot of weight and never changed the clothes. You know what I mean? Like we still wearing the oh, same she suit. Like she got the suit from her wife. That's what it looked like. <laughs> She got that one of them tall ass suits. Them shits is bellowing at the bottom. I'm like, what? What's the problem? Anyway, I don't. Anyways, let please open up so the lady can get her hair done. If that's why we're opening up, if we're opening up for the mayor, I'm all for it. Okay, <laughs> by all means, open up everything. Get her a spa facial treatment. She needs a complete and total make a makeover. Get her a wig. Get her a weave. Put some braids. Yeah. Get her a ball head fade. Put a wave cap on. Her. I don't care. Just fix the shit. Just fix it. <laughs> open up everything. Open up the so we can pray for. I don't give a damn. Open it all up because she needs a lot of help. She needs as much help we can give her. Okay, God bless. Right. There, that, that's one thing right there that we need to. We really need to push is getting Lori Lightfoot something, please, something. Anything. Braid it. I don't care. <laughs> Anything. I don't care if you open up strip clubs. So she can go meet a, a new hole and cheat, and then that hole helps her get a. <laughs> I don't care how it works. We never know how the universe is going to bless. Okay, I don't care how it's done. Okay, I don't care if you open up a chicken shack and then she ends up meeting somebody at the chicken shack. They give her a car and say, "You know what? I do hair. Whatever. I don't care. Just get it. Yeah, get it done, please. <laughs> <laughs> get it fixed. So. So yeah, so he said a hundred a hundred day mask, a hundred day mask. You know what's gonna be interesting to me is is um how this is gonna play out with red states. You know what I mean? Because you know, obviously before uh, it was the blue states going at it with Trump, they weren't trying to hear what he was saying. They they were they were running their own program. So how are the red states going that want to run their own program, keep everything up, don't no mask and all this stuff, how that's gonna play out with Biden, you know what I mean, with the Biden administration. You know, well, they're just gonna ignore him. Yeah, I hope so. I, mean, I think that's what they're gonna do. They're just gonna ignore him. Um, yeah. Now, if he starts trying to bring in national law guard, national guard, and all that kind of stuff, well, then I mean, I guess things will change. But um, I'm sure they're just gonna ignore him, like they've been ignoring the whole thing. Yeah. So, so, so Biden has said a hundred day mask. He said, uh, I think in this new stimulus package, he's saying. The minimum wage is going up to fifteen dollars. The federal minimum wage is going up to fifteen dollars an hour. Uh, immigration is going to be his number one priority. He wants to give eleven million immigrants citizenship. Uh, uh, I, I still haven't heard about his agenda 
for the black community I have not heard that yet. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I don't. I, I, th I think the reason we haven't heard because it doesn't exist. Like there, it, like Never. when you get to that page, in it just, it, yeah. it just, it, it just question. says they already voted for me. So what difference does it make? Hey, listen, let's be honest, okay? So, so we're gonna act like we're not like nobody's listening, okay? This is me. Yeah. I'm talking to my brother Che. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and talking like regular, okay? Okay. After you hit it, do you care? <laughs> <laughs> there it is there. I mean, yeah. No, yo, yo, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, all of the all of the back and forth and all of that. Yo, let me call you, let me text you. I'm thinking about you. What you doing? You know, where you at? You know what I'm saying? I'm just thinking about you in that dress you had on the other day. Woo 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 woo. Bam, I hit that. I'm done with this whole thing. You over here talking about, well, what about what about when you said that you text me? You like me? It's, bitch, what did you know? <laughs> Right, that I got what I wanted. I got what I wanted. And yeah. that's basically what has happened. And it's so sad to 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 watch a you know millions and millions of people get played. I mean, like 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 a, a high school 17-year-old, well, let's say 18, because I don't want to say pedophile, 18 year old <laughs> girl who's graduating from high school and a and a 24 year old rolls up in a in a in a blacked out BMW chromed out rims mm -hmm. cool, and 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 you just are just so dingy because you're 18. Right. Yeah you don't know. And your friends are like, oh my God, girl, he came out of there. He wants to see you, girl. Oh my God, girl, get in the car. Get in the car. Let me take a picture. You in the car. Get Girl, don't act like that. Oh my God, this is what's going on. Then you get in the car and you give him head while he's driving, and then he drops your ass off. He didn't bother dropping you off at your mama's house. He dropped you off five blocks south, made your ass walk. Like, th this is what it's like. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, right. damn, you don't even, you know. And now Sean King coming out talking about, well, we can't, now we can't get a hold of him. Of course, you can't get a hold of him. Just like the chick can't get a hold of the guy. She's texting right. him, calling him. He done blocked her number, go straight to voicemail. Like what? Like what did you think was going to happen? Like, are you kidding me? Well, you know, he he said it. I mean, that, that's this is what I don't understand. You know, Ice Cube They're got. A, he, say yeah, they he, always say it. They yeah. always, when you Che, when you meet a broad, you <laughs> never tell her that you love her. You never tell her this is gonna be forever. You tell her I'm mad busy. <laughs> 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 yeah, right, yeah. I got a lot of shit to do, you know what I'm saying? I got to run with my boys. I got some businesses I got to do this and the other. The only time I can meet you is at 2 o'clock. You going to be ready at 2 o'clock or whatever? Like, I don't have, I already got four baby mamas over here. I got this and that and the uh, other. You know what I'm saying? And so this is what it is. You, no dude ever, ever has to lie. You mm -hmm. don't have to. You can stretch the truth, but you don't have to lie. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He Biden said it out of his mouth. Kamala Harris said, I am not going to do anything specific for black people. That, that's exactly what she said, verbatim. Verbatim. Quote, mm -hmm. I'm never going to do anything specific for black people. I will help people of color, but I will not be doing anything specific for black people. That's what she said out of her mouth. So I'm trying to understand where you think you're going to catch this hole in a lie. She didn't lie. She no, told she didn't. Me. Yeah, she told the truth. And then, like I, like I was saying, you know, Ice Cube caught a lot of flack because he he put out and you know uh, put it out there for both sides to meet with, and they told him, I, "This is what I didn't, I didn't I didn't know if you didn't wake up when he when they said we'll talk to you after the election." It means they don't respect you. They don't respect the leverage. They don't respect the clout that you carry. They just know you're going to vote anyways, so yeah. it doesn't matter. It's like you said, "I'll call you. I'll call you at two o'clock in the morning." Why am I gonna call you at two o'clock in the morning? Because you're gonna answer at two o'clock in the morning. You know, so interesting. Because you're a dude. You said two a.m. I never said two a.m. I said. Right, yeah, I knew what you meant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's exactly the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. The point that I'm making is dudes are not no. Nobody has to try to uh, lie and all that other kind of stuff. If you're gonna give it up, you're already gonna give it up. So it's not even a matter of I ain't really got to do nothing. I don't have to do anything. You're gonna give it up. Period. And that's exactly what they did. They were like, Ice Cube, you coming in here trying to strong arm us. No, no, no. Yeah, don't you, yeah, don't you know what time it is? Back 
<laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Go sit down. Go make another movie. Okay? Friday yeah. after next after next after next. Okay? Friday. Go <laughs> do one of them. Because they nobody, nobody's paying no attention to you because your people don't back you up. And they embarrass, they embarrass the entire African American community when they did that shit. And 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 the fact that the, the I, just on principle alone, because you did my dude like that, because you did Ice Cube like that, I would have voted for the other people. I'd have been like, no, you can't do my dude like that. This is yeah. you. This is NWA. You cannot. It's before so some of you were born, this Negro was talking about fuck the police. Mm -hmm. Before you were born, he was talking about fuck the police. And you gonna disrespect my man like that? No, I can't. I can't allow it. I can't allow it. So whatever, whatever Ice Cube say do, that's what I'm doing because it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful, mm -hmm. but, but 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 we as a community, we we don't have that level of loyalty, and that's really unfortunate. It's really, really, really unfortunate. Yeah, because I can not see. I mean, it, it that, that's exact. That's exactly it's 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 disrespect. It is disrespect when you can sit here and say that no, we'll talk to you. At, I mean, you 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 basically are saying you're you're not going anywhere. It's not yeah. a big whatever. Who yeah. cares? You know, yeah. but, but I've been saying this before. I, I think that the Democrats are done with the black community. I think that they're I think they're on to uh, immigrants. I think that's their. They Biden said out of his own mouth. He said it is his suggestion that black people get with Mexicans. That's what he said. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. He said Hispanic. He didn't say Mexicans. Right. He said, I suggest that the black people get with the Hispanics. That's what he said. What does that mean? That means I'm not, I'm not, I don't give a damn about you, Negroes. What are you talking about? I don't care about you. If you hear, I mean, you're making 11, go ahead. You might, you might want to go get with the Hispanics. Well, That's you're making 11 million people citizens and, and most of them are going to be Hispanic. I mean, obviously there's not all of them are Hispanic, but most are, and you're going to make 11 million citizens. So what do you think those 11 million are, who you think they're going to vote for? So that's 11 million new votes, Right. right. So do you think they care? They don't care no more. All that ice cube. Let's talk. Let's do. It. They don't. Yeah. All right. We. I told you to go mess with them because they got numbers. That's right. And and they're gonna put us in office. So if you want to be on the winning team, you better get with them. That's yeah. basically what he said. And it's like it's well, so different. And he was basically saying, "You won't survive." Yeah. You won't survive. So you better get with the Hispanics because you won't survive. Like, it, it, you know, people got mad when Trump said during his uh, 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 campaign, he said to the black people, well, what do you have to lose? And people got so mad. And I was oh, like, yeah. right. He was like, well, I'm, <laughs> he's like, well, either vote for me or vote for this other person. What do you have to lose? Like, I'm the better choice based on what, you know, if you just look at your history and what has happened and with this party, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, like, what do you have to lose? People got so upset. But the truth of the matter is, if you don't jump on board either with yourself or with somebody else that will allow you to jump on board, because you can't jump, blacks can't jump on board with the Chinese. They can't jump mm -hmm. on board with the Japanese. Mm -mm. They can't jump on board with the Iranians. They can't jump on board with the European, French, Dutch, Irish, whatever. They can't jump on board with the native Indians, even though they try all the time. You better try to get with the brown. Yeah, that's, that's, best, that's your best bet because those are only people that are willing to take you on. Well, I, I mean, it's almost like they're saying at this at this point, you really don't have a home politically because we don't really need you. You're scared to death of the Republicans, so you know you 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 know you ain't going over there, and we know you ain't going over there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So if I was you, I would make friends with these people because that's who we're going to be catering to for the next four years. By the way, you know what I'm saying, and it's 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 like you said, the blatant disrespect, the blatant you know hypocrisy, the blatant lies, and it's 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 just it's 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 an unfortunate situation that that now we're all in. Yeah, but it, it it's going to be interesting. What what do you think? Let, let let's just touch on this real quick before because it's almost wow, it's almost been an hour. Uh, that's crazy, but um. Do you so what so the thing so what happened at the Capitol, you think that that is just a prerequisite to come after Trump supporters? Um, a prerequisite to what? Say it one more time. 
I do think it's a prerequisite to come after Trump Trump supporters legally uh, with, you know. Well, they've already done it. Right. They've already started arresting people. Mm -hmm. so I find it to be interesting. I want to just read this one uh, excerpt out of uh, this book by Dr. Claude Anderson. I absolutely love him. And I want to read this Black yeah. Labor, White uh, White Wealth. Which, and, which one is it? Uh, Black Labor, White Wealth. Okay. Yeah. OK. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Dr. Claude Anderson. He says about immigration. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that I highlighted, but I'm just going to read this one excerpt. He said, during the last three decades, it has become politically correct to dump blacks and their racial problems into broad categories such as ethnic issues, special interests, and minority groups. It is also popular now to view the grievances of all groups as equal in all respects, placing blacks into an aggression of dissimilar groups and equating their circumstance with other minorities is little more than political sleight of hand. It's an illusion of equality in a so-called colorblind American society. The colorblind myth simply maintains the status quo, thereby keeping blacks non-competitive and marginal. He goes further to say, um, uh, he says, uh, how can marginally existing blacks walk walk an ethnic path towards self-improvement when they are not treated like the ethnic group, about those 11 million, right? Mm -hmm. And if they were so treated, both the government and the majority society would continue to allow an unending flow of new ethnic immigrants mm -hmm. who preempt blacks in the assimilation process. <laughs> It was white society's willingness to offer assimilation to everybody but blacks that has placed the greatest burden on blacks and forced them to now seek alternative routes outside of mainstream. I mean, it says right here, this book was written how many years ago? Yeah, that, that was written a while ago. This book is old as dirt. Mm -hmm. book, where is the publication on this book? This book is old as dirt. So I just wanted to uh, uh, say that real briefly because 1994, yeah. how in 1994, Dr. Claude Addison wrote this book. And when you, when, you know, when I was uh, thinking about immigration, so I was like, Dr. Claude Addison broke it down ages ago. He broke it down ages ago. And, mm -hmm. and the problem is that blacks don't want to, African Americans, where you go, don't want to think about any of that. They, they just want to be loved. You know, oh, no, it's okay. We're liked. We're loved. It's okay. We're all together. We're all together. We're all together. You really think you're all together? Really? You really think when these, when these Arabs and Iraqs, and I hope I'm not offending anybody because I don't really know the right terminology, okay? The people from Dubai, okay? When they come in and they buy these 13,000 square foot homes, cash money, mm -hmm. do you really think you're together? Just because... We look alike when I don't have a tan. Give me a break. Mm -hmm. They don't give a damn about what you're talking about. Now, moving on to what your question was. Absolutely. This was this was just a precursor because uh, when when the uh, Antifa Black Lives Matter movement so forth and so on, when they were burning up stuff for an entire year, <laughs> I, I mean, right. they, if they got arrested, they were released immediately. So, uh, uh, there's all kinds of reports and video and uh, uh, pictures and so forth and so on of, of Antifa being arrested but then taken into like some private van or a mm -hmm. bus and you know it's a lot of people. Matter of fact, I was following one guy. I was following him before all this stuff happened. He was a, a, a black guy, but he was from London, mm -hmm. and he attacked. He has tattoos, literally. His entire body is completely padded. I can't remember his name right now, but anyways. And um, he was heavily, heavily into this Antifa thing. Mm -hmm. so I kept saying to myself, where is he getting the money? First of all, why are you even over here? Because you're supposed to be in London. Right? Yeah, right. Paris, wherever, wherever you Burning up our cities. Yeah, go ahead. So you're over here, and he's he was at every rally. He was in Seattle. He was in New York. He was in Detroit. He was in California. He and I was like, "Who's paying this guy's bills?" Because the guy don't have no job. Mm -hmm. He's just a teenager. He's like, he's not a teenager. He's like uh, 
22, 25, maybe 25. I think he's like 22, 23 years old, something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, where are you getting this money from? And I've read his story because I was following him prior to, right? So right. he was adopted uh, by these people uh, in, in, the, in, in Paris or London or whatever. They weren't super duper rich. He was a drug addict since he was a teenager. Very, very heavy on drugs. Tried to commit suicide a couple, two, three times. So who's paying you? Because I'm sure your mama's not paying you to go run around the United States. Right, right. So he got arrested and then he was out. And then I was like, well, what? Well, what? And I mean, I saw a video of this guy. I mean, he was everywhere. Fuck the police, da, 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 black guys. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, wow. So now something happens at the Capitol. And it wasn't even something that happened from what I could from what I could tell. It was mm -hmm. just a bunch of people going and saying, we're gonna stop the steal. That was the hashtag, stop the steal, right? So, but the, but, the, but the problem with human beings is emotional right. and not thinking because I could have told them that this was a bad idea. I could have told them somebody else is going to be here. You don't want, this is not what you want because you have to move in silence. And once you announce that you're going to go somewhere, everybody's going to be there, including your enemies. You can't do yeah. that. The stupidest shit you could have ever done. What they all should have done, if they were going to be in D.C., they should have all had on a certain color or something like that and just stayed outside. And then that way, anybody that goes inside is completely disassociated with them altogether. And, mm -hmm. and you're OK with whatever happens to them. Like, well, they're not with us. So, you know, we, we, we didn't go. And when, when police officers open the gate for you, you got to know it's a trap. Like, yeah. Nobody's opening up the gate at the Capitol. Like, come on. Like, it was all, it was, it was so, it was so simple. And I was, it was sad to watch. It really was. Because of course, now anything that happens after this, if Trump supporters or whatever, if they do decide to do anything, now Biden is going to call every troop, every, and he's going to be nasty about it. He's going to be very, very nasty about it. So, well, I think yeah, I think it's 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 a uh, it, it's not good going forward, you know. Yeah. What I mean? And it's it, it was it, it it might have sounded good, but I mean, for one, you went in there, you didn't have a plan. It, if, if that was your plan, there was no plan. It was like once we get in, we get in. We don't know what we're doing, but now that you're now that you're in, now you have to, you know, now you have to do something. You didn't do anything. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing good came of it. And in fact, I think it's just going to be, it's just going to give them reason to create more legislation that's, you know, it's like, it's like 9-11, Patriot Act as a result of 9-11, the way that they're, you know, pumping this thing up is that if, if it was 9-11, so I, I just think that's be just, it's just going to give them reason why they can just go in and do more. I mean, it's yeah. like you said, like, like you said, you, you made, made one man the, 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 the movement. He became the movement, and so everything that he did, you embodied as well. And so, it's it's unfortunate. Yeah, but, uh, it's very unfortunate because, again, they also got played. Like you know, mm -hmm. you just got you just got straight up played. I mean, that was the stupidest shit. That was this. That was just not smart. That was just not smart. But emotions are very very high. You can't blame them. You know, you you got right. people whose businesses have closed down. Who. Uh, can't send their children to school, who are being threatened with vaccinations, who are whose freedom of speech has been completely, you know, shut down or at least eradicated, something terrible. Uh, you know, it, the emotions are really, really high. You got a lot of people who uh, who have researched for many, many years, a lot of very scandalous, nasty, demonic, disgusting behavior that has been mm -hmm. going on you know, in this country and other countries abroad. And so they're just like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, we balls deep. Let's go. You know, right. and and again, I think that they just wanted their voices to be heard, but they did not, they did not, it, that was not a chess move at all. That was no, not no. a chess move. Mm -hmm. That was straight up 100% emotion. We're going to stand up for our country. 
but not paying attention to who you're standing up against. These people are diabolical and have been for this entire time. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. I don't. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think that it was. That's going to be good. But you know, we'll see. We'll see what's going on. You know, Biden is there. He'll. You know, as 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 of now, he should be sworn in. What What is it? Wednesday. Yeah. Tuesday? Or yeah, Wednesday. So we'll see. But uh, you got anything going on that you wanna you wanna put out there or? Uh, yeah, everybody, everybody on Apple and uh, Google, Android, whatever. Uh, download my app. It's entitled McLoverable. So it's my last name, M C G L O V E R. And then A is in Apple, B is in Boy, L is in Larry, E is in Edward. McLoverable. McLoverable. Download okay. my app. Um, I'm on absolutely uh, everywhere you can think of. And I'm there as my name, Megan McGlover. So I'm on Facebook, Megan McGlover. Twitter, Megan McGlover. Instagram, Megan McGlover. <laughs> like, Everything. Yeah. Is my website is meganmcglover.com. Uh, uh, I I love to help people. I love to uh, talk to people. I am uh, the truth teller, and so I'm just all yeah. excited to talk to people about who they are, what is their purpose, uh, how to get it done strategically. I am a life coach as well. Uh, so everything is on my website, meetingmcglover.com. And, and again, Che, you know, I just love you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, like I said, you, you, you were going to bring the energy. You brought it. You didn't disappoint. I know everybody's out there, you know, love it. Love to have you on again. We of do course. this. See what's up, man. Oh, yeah. God, well, you know, I think, hey, man, the 20th ain't going to be no, ain't going to be no spring chicken. It's going to be so much popping out. I really think so. You know, yeah. unless, unless people are smart and they wait. Yeah, but, we'll see. But I don't think so. And then, if not, even if people are smart, what will probably mm -hmm. happen is it'll be a setup. It'll be a setup. They'll do it, and then they'll blame it on Trump supporters, and then that's when shit's gonna get crazy. Well, so. hey, I, I nothing surprises me. 2020, 2020 brought everything. I think twenty twenty one is gonna bring it even more. So, Yo, and, yeah, yeah, and and and, 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 and you're crazy. Yeah, and we'll be here to cover it all. So, yeah, right. <laughs> well, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll do this again. And thank you for everybody for tuning in and 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 whether you watched it, listened to it, whatever it is, we appreciate it. We hope that you share it. You know, get it out to as many people right. as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and so we'll uh, see you guys next time. Thank you. This is Red Pill Che, Megan McGlover, No Spoon Podcast. Thank you. Peace out.